Hey guys, the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast is starting back up again. You ready for this? So, right now I got my buddy Scott with me, and uh, we're anxious to get you know podcast episodes made. And so we don't have our podcast room set up yet, but uh, while we're working on it, we're just going to take a drive and do what we got to do. And uh, today's podcast episode, we're actually talking about. I got my outline here. What's the difference between a reverse flow smoker and an offset smoker? So prepare for me to blow your mind technically about what I think the difference between those two pits are. And uh, anyway, so we're gonna cue up the intro real quick and uh, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. Hey, so uh, we're sitting here at a stoplight now, um, trying to trying to do everything safer. You know, I got my little script, so you might see me look down once in a while. Um, if you're listening, you won't see me, but if you're watching on uh, somewhere, then you might see it. But anyway, uh, so we're going to talk about what is the main differences between a reverse flow smoker and an offset smoker. So I get these questions all the time. You know, we uh, a lot of you guys know smokerplans.net. We sell smoker plans, and uh, there's always a guy that calls up and says, can you, uh, do you have a set of plans for a Texas style smoker or an offset smoker is what it really is. And they call them all kinds of other things too. But um, the answer is in the short is that any of our smoker plans will actually work for both styles of pits. You just have to make a couple of changes on your end. So we're gonna talk, break that down for you today. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is a little bit about construction. So on the construction of a reverse flow smoker, we're gonna have a baffle plate in the cook chamber. You guys all heard me talk about baffle plates. And that starts horizontally in the cook chamber and goes from the firebox end. It's welded in solid, goes all the way across the fire bo- or the main cooking chamber until it gets to the other end of the smoker. And there's usually a gap right there at the end where all the smoke and the heat and the air mass is forced to take a 180 degree turn upward and turn 180 degrees and go all the way back towards the firebox. That's why we call it a reverse flow smoker. So um, on an offset, we're not going to have that baffle plate. Now there's two different kinds of offsets. There's a tuning plate, which is what I always call a traditional offset. And then there's these new Texas style uh, kinds. These are what you see a lot of these famous pitmasters down in, in Texas using and stuff like that. Um, there are some pretty good sized uh, pit builders around that are making those. Those are just an open chamber uh, offset smoker. So uh, what you'll have, we're gonna talk for the purpose of, for the sake of argument because the, the tuning plate version, the old traditional set offset, uh, pretty much a lot of people have forgotten about that. They don't really, you don't see a whole lot of those built anymore. I think I'm the only guy left maybe that talks about it, but on the uh, open chamber offsets, we're not gonna have any kind of a baffle plate inside the cook chamber horizontally at all. It's just gonna be an open chamber and you've got your main cooking grate there. Now, on the uh, the main difference is, is at the throat opening, depending on who's building the pit or what design you're looking for, we're gonna try to direct the flow of smoke and heat and the air mass upward at almost a 90 degree turn as fast as we can. Now you'll see all different kinds of ways of doing this. I think some of the Jambo style pits, they actually have a two piece throw baffle, which one little short horizontal piece, and then they've got more of a scoop looking thing that aims up. Or you'll have the ones like I tell people to build. Um, I, I got advice from a buddy of mine. I'm not gonna tell you who it is. Um, uh, on a on a design that he used to have that I really like it a lot is a uh, just a round I call it a throat baffle just a round plate and it's about four inches out or so depending on how big your pit is and it's just a dead turn going straight up and uh, what we're doing with that is we're trying to get the flow of our air mass to go all the way up and go across the top of the cooker and it's going to convect itself downwards towards the smokestack. So on pretty much all the different offset style smokers, you're gonna see the smokestack is at the opposite end of the cook chamber and it's mounted low on the cook chamber uh, at great level. So if you haven't uh, lost me yet, I hope you're still there. That's the main two differences in in construction. Um, Stack location is another important aspect. So 
The smokestack, like we just talked about on an offset, is going to be about cooking grate level, and it's going to be on the, uh, the opposite end from the firebox. So what we're going to do there uh, on a reverse flow, our smokestack is mounted on the top dead center of the cook chamber. Now, the main reason for that is on a, on a reverse flow smoker, we're cooking from the bottom up. We're not cooking from the top down like we would on an open chamber offset. Um, so anyway, we're, we don't want to create any more restriction. Once we get up through that baffle plate, we don't want to create a whole bunch of restriction in our air mass, the, the flow of our air, because it's just going to wind up condensating and losing more temperature. So like if it has to come up under the baffle plate, up through the gap, turn 180 degrees, go all the way to the other end of the cook chamber, then it's going to have, if you put that stack low, it's going to have to go back down and then go out the stack. And all that extra convection in there can just cause you to lose too much heat out of your air mass. And that leads to condensation um, and soot and things like that. So that's why we keep it at top dead center because we're getting maximum convection in there by turning the air mo the airflow 180 degrees. Everybody need to take a breath. I need to take a breath. Hang on, sip of coffee. Okay, so that's the main difference in smokestack location. There's one other thing that you'll see different here and there is the height of the firebox on the cooking chamber. So. On a, on a reverse flow, we're trying to keep that firebox low in the cook chamber because we're gonna mount the baffle plate on top of it. We, want, we don't want the air mass coming out of the firebox and it have to make a downturn before it goes under the plate because that causes too much restriction at the firebox. We want it to be wide open so that the air mass, when it comes out of the firebox, it has no restriction up until it gets to the point of the baffle plate gap. That is how we get efficiency in that style cooker for even cooking temps left to right. That absorbs heat into the baffle plate, which radiates upward, and then we have the heated air mass that comes backwards across it. So we wind up with a dead even cook chamber temp, which is a really huge benefit if you're cooking a lot of the same size meat. So on a uh, offset though, an open air offset, we're gonna wind up mounting that firebox most of the time about 50% up the sidewall of the fire of the cook chamber. Now, uh, the main reason for that is, is because we're trying to get our air mass to go straight up in there. And I'll explain more about that here in a minute. We wanna cook from the top down on an offset. So, because otherwise everything would just come right out and that end of that cooking rack would just get roasted. Um, you know, you're not gonna really be able to cook there you know we, we need to do something else in that spot so we put a that throat baffle on there and we might as well raise the firebox up a little bit and then we can cut that throat open that throat opening wide open and it won't cause us any restriction there so the second part of our uh, conversation here is we're going to talk about operation of, of the, the different types of operation in these smokers so they are going to be a little bit different um, on a reverse flow, I like to almost say that that's like a set it and forget it stick burner. Um, you can almost set your watch because you know that every 45 minutes, you're gonna wind up putting a log on this pit. Um, if your fire gets a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, it's not a big deal because you're gonna have an air inlet damper and a smokestack damper that you can use to your advantage to uh, increase and decrease the amount of air that goes to your fire. So you're still gonna be building a fire starting with a coal bed or use a torch until you get a good coal bed established. And uh, you know, you're gonna throw wood on the fire every so often. Your log rack's gonna be up off the bottom so it doesn't choke out the air uh, coming to your fire. And uh, you know, you're gonna wind up varying the size of your uh, fire though on an offset. On a uh, traditional offset, you know, you're not going to do, you're not really going to do as much adjustment of your air inlet as you would on a reverse flow. Um, you're just pretty much going to set it. If you look at a lot of the Jambo style pits, those guys, a lot of times they, their air inlet is bolted in position. It's got a big nut. So you can't adjust it without loosening that nut because they know that every single time that's where they're going to be cooking and that's what the air is going to need. 
So they vary it by opening and shutting their smokestack damper and varying the size of the fire in their in their cook chain in their uh, firebox. So uh, you know, temp control on these things is uh, is a bit of a trick to learn. Um, I remember the first time I ran, I ran one. Um, you know, I wound up coming to the conclusion that we just need to just put the air inlet damper about 25% open and the smokestack damper at about 50%. And then I just took coals out of the fire. You'll see a lot of these guys will have a shovel with them because they shovel a little bit of the coal bed out if they get running too hot. Um, or they'll, uh, they'll add more coal, charcoal or uh, wood to their fire to increase their temp, you know. So learning that rhythm with one of these pits can be a little bit of a trick, you know. Um, startup sequence, like I said, there's two ways. You can start it like I do on a reverse flow. On an offset, you can start it with the chimney of charcoal and then lay some wood on top of that charcoal bed and, and get it burning, you know. And uh, like I always say, the charcoal bed is where the heat is coming from and the flavor's coming from the, the wood that you put on, but then that wood's becoming the next round of charcoal for your coal bed. So, um, you know, if you start with a good coal bed, you'll get a you'll you'll have a lot better cook, I think. But you'll see a lot of guys go out there and aim a, a torch at their log rack. One of them big, they always called it the Texas match, you know, the big weed burner. They'll aim it at that thing and just let it cook. I mean, it'll uh, you know they'll aim it at it until they get that that fire roaring, and uh, it takes a little bit longer to get that coal bed to start. And uh, once they uh, once they get that coal bed started, though, they're good to go, you know. And you'll also see them probably preheat the cook chamber with a torch too. You know they do that once in a while. But as far as the the startup sequence, you know you're just going to try to get a coal bed established and then start adding wood. And uh, you're gonna try to establish a rhythm for how often you put wood on it, and you're gonna establish a size for how big of a fire you're gonna run. Um, temp zones in one of these offsets, you're, you're looking more at like on, a, on an, off, an open air offset, you're gonna have a little bit of a cooler temp if you build it with a throat baffle, like I said, a cooler temp towards the firebox, and you're gonna get hotter as you go away from the firebox. Um, usually the hottest part of the whole smoker is going to be at the exhaust where that stack is down at the cooking grate level. That's, that's going to be like the hot zone. There's also this thing they call the microwave that these, a lot of these uh, competition cooks talk about. And that's at the throat opening of the firebox, but it's an elevated rack. It's not the bottom rack. It's like the next rack up. And so what happens is, is you get this blast of hot air coming right down on top of your food that, that is going to uh, just basically, uh, it's just gonna hit that brisket right there. And they like that because it'll swell the brisket up. If you get a good brisket, um, you know, like a Wagyu or something, you know, you can, it'll actually swell. Um, so anyway, then we get to talking about cooking style. Boy, this is a long one, isn't it? Um, on the cooking style, uh, like I say, the, the big difference there is that you're cooking on a reverse flow from the bottom up. So the smoke and the heat source is under the food as it comes under the baffle plate, the air mass comes under the baffle plate and we're gonna absorb heat into that baffle plate and everything's gonna radiate upwards. And so, you know, you're getting that heat source under your food and it's cooking upward. So you're gonna get a little bit of a different way of cooking from that. Like you're. Uh, you're going to be able to have a more even cooking chamber temp. Uh, you're not going to have to flip and rotate a whole bunch, you know, that kind of thing. But on an open air offset, it's going to take a while for that cooker to come up to temp and equalize. On a reverse flow, a big reverse flow, maybe an hour and you'll be there. But on a, uh, on like a uh, open air offset, what we're doing is all that heat is going right up to the top of the cooker. We all know heat rises, and so it's gonna take time for the heat to equalize and go down um, through, the, through the steel and the iron and stuff in that cooker. And then we're gonna have some air mass that's gonna convect downwards that's also gonna heat. So at, imagine it, this is the way that I explain it. Imagine you have this bucket that's upside down, a five gallon bucket. And uh, you, uh, well, let's back up. Let's make this easier. 
take the five gallon bucket, drill a hole on both sides of it, put water in one hole, and it's gonna fill up until it comes to the other side, and then it's gonna come out the hole on the other side. So you're gonna wind up filling this bucket from the bottom up until it equalizes in, in level of liquid, and then it's gonna come out the other side. So let's flip the bucket upside down with the same holes in it. And we're gonna, this time, we're gonna have that one side's our throat opening, and we're gonna fill it up with smoke and heat and air mass from our firebox. And it's gonna all rise up to the top, and it's gonna continually fill until it comes down to the level of where that smokestack is on the other side. Then we're gonna be able to establish a draft, and the smoke and the heat and everything will come out the smokestack. So that's why I say it cooks from the top down, because we're literally filling it, air is just like a fluid, just like liquid is, right? So it fills up from the top and it pushes down until it gets to the level of that, cook, that uh, cooking rack level smokestack, then it will establish a draft and go out. Now this takes time to get the heat equalized in that cook chamber on Luann, that's a thousand gallon offset. That cooker, she would take two to three hours to get right. Um, before we could actually like walk away from it, you know, it, it you had to you had to really for that first two to three hours, you know, you had to follow a really close cycle on heating that pit up if you started out from a dead cold pit, um, you know, and and then as we as we went like if the needle on the thermometer would show you know 315 minutes, but it wouldn't be equalized. You'd have cold spots real bad. So, uh, you know, that's, that's one main difference. The other main difference is, is that you're gonna have to flip and rotate your food on an offset, like it or lump it, because since, we're, since we have that air mass coming from the top down the opposite direction, it really wants to go naturally. We're gonna have a, a zone in that cooker that might be a little bit hotter temp, but the big difference is, is that you're gonna get more convection from the top down, so you're gonna, if you're looking at color on your food, you'll wind up with a different color, a darker color where the air mass is strongest, where it hits first. And, uh, you know, so you're gonna have to flip your food in that cooker for appearance, um, if you're doing competitions and such. But then also, you'll have one end that'll have a slightly higher temperature. They say dead even, but you know, maybe 25 degrees difference. So you might have some briskets, like if you fill that cooker up left to right with briskets, you might have some that'll finish faster than others. So you'll see them take a big old spatula or a big old hook and they'll move them, they'll, them briskets around on them pits like that when they're cooking a lot of one kind of food. Um, the other thing is quantity of food. On a reverse flow, since we're cooking from the, from the bottom up, uh, we can actually uh, load that cooker vertically with food. We can have multiple racks. So the bottom rack uh, can be full of pork butts left to right on that cooker. Then we can have a second rack right above it and we're gonna get the exact same result from the bottom rack to the top rack on those cookers. You really won't have to do any flipping and rotating because we're, we're offsetting that air pattern and then when it comes back around, it's gonna have to go through the meat on its way to the smokestack. Um, so, you won't have to do all that flip and rotating. So application wise, if you're doing a lot of catering or fundraisers or you're cooking for a restaurant or something and you've got a lot of the same kind of food, uh, you're, gonna get a, you're gonna get a better uh, result, I think, with a uh, production wise, with a uh, reverse flow. Uh, with an offset, if you're cooking like a lot of different size meat, like if you're doing brisket and chicken and you know, maybe some sausage on the same cooker. Uh, you know, you might actually have a better result with an offset because you can mix it up and you can cook in zones and you can start your brisket. If you're doing two briskets on a, you know, 500 gallon pit, you can start that brisket on one end and then move it down to the other end whenever you're uh, uh, finishing it. You know, you can let it ride out on the other end of the pit for a while. So cooking style, um, I prefer if I'm doing quantity, like a reverse flow. If I'm doing cooking for fun or doing a lot of different size stuff, I'm gonna go for the offset. Now you will get a different flavor, I believe, from an offset than you will from a reverse flow. Um, our experience, especially with the meat missile, if you look at the meat missile build we did, 
I tell you that that cooker is just like there's nothing in between that air mass and the and the food, and it's just going right in there, and you get a hundred percent of that flavor. I, I believe you'll get a better smoke penetration. Um, I think you'll get a better product, but it, as with everything, to get a better product, it takes more work. So there's the big difference. Um, so conclusion, um, I like all styles of pits. I don't prefer one over the other, except in certain applications. And uh, you know, if it was me, every single time for a fun cook, if I'm wanting to, if I'm wanting to just experiment and try to see what I can do with my flavor profile or my result. I'm probably going to go for that offset every time. Um, if uh, if I'm looking to just cook for production, and uh, you know the consistency of the result that I'm looking for, and minimal labor in my cook, I'm I'm going to go for the reverse flow every single time. So hey, I hope that helps. Um, you know, over the years we've made over 200 sets of smoker plans that you can get for all different sorts of plant or size pits and cookers building 500 gallon tanks whatever pipe it doesn't matter go to smokerplans.net and you can get your start on your build um, if you want to get a free set of smoker plans though there's a link in the description click on that it's going to take you to smokerplans.com and you have a chance to get yourself a free set of reverse flow smoker plans um, it's one of our best selling set of plans, perfect patio model, and uh, it's a great place to start your barbecue journey. So anyway, until, then, until next week, hey guys, I appreciate you listening to this highly technical broadcast that we do here on, on iTunes and YouTube and everywhere else you might see this thing. And uh, please hit the like and subscribe and share button. And uh, you know, get on social media and give me some feedback. Tell me what you think. Anyway, appreciate you. We'll see you later.